Hi, I'm Ollie. I'm an Autodesk certified instructor, and today I want to talk to you about the top three reasons why you should be doing your patterns in the 3D solid environment rather than in your sketches. Now, you've probably noticed there are actually two places that you can do a pattern from. You can either go to the Create menu in the Solid workspace and do patterns on the 3D objects, or from within a sketch, you can create a pattern of the 2D sketch objects. Now, I want to talk to you about why we should try and do them in the solid workspace instead of doing them in your sketches. There are three main reasons for this. The first is to save you clicks and save you time. The second is for performance. And the third is to enable design iteration. So let's jump straight into that first one. Now what I have here is I have a part that re requires a pattern. And I have two ways I can do it. I could very easily create a pattern of the lines that I need inside of here, select my central point, and then create a number of patterns, for example, four. Now when I've done that, I could go through, I can finish my sketch, and then I could extrude by selecting all four of these items, extrude these all, all the way through. And by doing so, I have the part that I was looking for. And that works quite well. But doing it in the sketch has already slowed me down. You'll have noticed that when I did my extrude, I had to select all four of these profiles before I could extrude them all. Now in this case, that's actually all right. Four is not too bad. But let's say you had a, a slightly larger pattern that you were doing. Here, if I wanted to extrude all of these through, I've patterned the sketch, I'd have to select each one individually. And there are ways that you can get around this, but ultimately you can see how I'm gonna be here really quite some time. The alternative way is that I could go in, I can remove this here, extrude here for now, and just do one on the object that I'm looking for all the way through. Now, I can create my pattern of that specific feature. And when I do so, I only have to select the feature itself. And no matter how many times I do my pattern, I'm still going to be clicking only on it a single time. And then on top of that, let's talk about how many clicks it's going to take for me to edit that pattern. With the 3D pattern, it's very straightforward. Not only can I very easily find the pattern itself because there's a dedicated pattern icon in the timeline that I can right click and edit. If I had to do that on the sketch, first of all, I have to find the sketch itself. Now, again, this is a very basic part, but sometimes you have assemblies with hundreds of sketches and they're all in specific components. And then each component has five, 10 sketches. You've got to first identify the sketch, then edit the sketch, then you've got to find the pattern inside of here. And there's that little icon there that I'm looking for. Right click on that, edit the pattern. And only now am I able to actually edit the thing that I'm looking for. So already by doing it in the 3D pattern space, I'm saving myself time both when creating the pattern, but also likely to be saving myself time in the future if I ever have to come back and edit it. Now I'm gonna come back to this model for my second point, which is performance. Now, the hard fact of the matter is that Fusion has better performance when dealing with 3D objects versus 2D objects. So from a performance point of view, I'm much better off having a single sketch that I then extrude to create the feature that I'm looking for. And then when I pattern that 3D object, I have a lot more flexibility and Fusion will be able to compute what's needed a lot more easily. Now on top of that, there are actually features around that as well. So inside of here, I have this compute type option that shows up when I'm selecting a feature as my object type in 3D. Now that's not available in the 2D pattern tool, but it will allow me to change how I am optimizing my design and how it is calculating the patterned objects that are being created. Now optimize is the fastest and it essentially just copies the faces. Identical will mean that it's exactly the same as the original one, no matter what. And adjust will actually create a new extrude in the back end for each individual item. So it'll be a little bit slower, 
but it will enable changes to go through. Now my final reason is for design iteration. Essentially Fusion is designed with its timeline and the way that you do assemblies that it enables you to iterate on your design incredibly easily. Now the problem with doing your pattern in a sketch rather than in 3D is that it blocks some of those routes that Fusion can take to improve and iterate on your design as you make changes. Now we've already seen how editing the sketch version of a pattern is already harder. I have to go in, find it, edit, find the pattern, but I can at least do that edit. But then look at what happens if I, let's say, increase this to five pattern instances. That looks great on my sketch, but then the moment I finish my sketch, one of those pattern instances is missing because I also now have to go and update the extrude to select that fifth new profile that I want to be extruded. Only then will it include everything. So those are steps that you can really easily miss as you make changes and not even notice in your design until it causes a problem. But even further than that, it's unlikely that your design will be this simple. It's not going to be just some polygon cut out of a cylinder. In reality, it will have 3D aspects to it. It'll be more complex. If I wanted to add a fillet to this, I can't just add my fillet to the individual item that I've patterned. I'd have to add it to all of the different faces because the feature isn't the thing that's being patterned and I can't include these fillets in the pattern itself because the pattern's in the 2D environment. Now, before you all in the comments tell me that yes, I can add my fillet into the sketch and then pattern the whole thing, A, that's increasing the complexity of your sketch again, which from a performance point of view makes it even more impactful. But also a fillet is not the only 3D item that you might have inside of a pattern. You might have a thread in a hole. That thread is a 3D object that you couldn't pattern with the 2D pattern tool. You might have a countersink or a counterbore on holes. So as we look to all of these, these are features that you can't necessarily go through and edit with a 2D pattern. Whereas here, I could go back to before the pattern in my timeline because it's its own individual item. I could add a chamfer to my hole to make it a countersink hole. I could then go back to the pattern and it won't have registered yet, but I can select in my pattern to add a second feature being that chamfer. And I've miscalculated my chamfer size, but ultimately it's still now adding that chamfer to my pattern. If I put this file back to being a 3D pattern, it actually also enables other types of tools to be used. So inside of here, once I've got this pattern created, I can use tools like the rule fillet. So inside of fillet, we have the standard fillet, but I also have a rule fillet. And what this allows me to do is actually select features rather than necessarily just edges or faces. So I could actually tell it to apply the fillet to the extrude and say, actually, I want a three mil fillet. And I'll make this just fillets only. So it's the inside here. But I can also, if I press and hold control or command on a Mac, include the pattern in my rule fillet. So that pattern feature is included. So now when I apply this fillet, even though I'm doing it after the pattern has happened, it's being applied to all of the items within the pattern. So doing this pattern in 3D will enable that design iteration. You can change your design, even though you did this pattern ages ago and you know that you've enabled yourself at the time to be able to change it in the future. Now, I'm not trying to say that you shouldn't use the pattern tool in the sketch environment. It has its place. There are times that it is incredibly useful and you should use it. But these three items are reasons why you should consider when you are using the pattern tool in 2D and when you are using it in 3D. As a general rule, doing it in 3D will produce a better result for you and for the part that you're trying to create. It's going to save you time and the number of clicks that you have to do. It's going to increase your performance in Fusion and ensure that you can have larger assemblies with other more detailed sketch items. And finally, it's going to enable you to iterate on your design 
with a much lower likelihood of errors or you having to spend time fixing things once you've changed them. Hopefully you can apply this to your own designs and you found this really useful. If you did, press that thumbs up down below and subscribe to the channel. We really appreciate it when you do. And other than that, I will see you in the next video.